story time. So, it is known that the king of the animals, the four-footed, those that walk on the earth, that is the bear. But who is the king of the sky? Is it the clever raven? Is it the majestic eagle? No, it is a much simpler animal. A much more unassuming bird. And this is the story of the war between the king of the sky and the king of the four-footed animals. It so happened that the king, the bear, was walking with the wolf one day. And it was during this conversation between the wolf and the bear that they discovered, or, well, the wolf told the bear, that the Rillo Wren was the king of the birds, of the flying animals. And the bear wanted to see this grand palace that the wren must have. So, the wolf took him, but he said, you must wait till the queen is done and has come and fed the young. And the queen of the flying birds, the wren, she came and she fed her babies. And then they followed her, and when they found the nest, they waited, for the wolf made sure that they left before they could actually see the nest. And when both the wren parents had flown away, the wolf and the bear went up into the tree trunk and looked in and saw the little wren chicks in the nest. And the bear, he was just disgusted. He was like, this is no palace. And you are not honorable children. You are disreputable children. Look at this. He was so disgusted by the sight of these tiny chicks and the just, just the nest and a tree. At this, the Willow Wren's children begin and to shriek, No, we're not! We are not disreputable children. We are honorable children. You will pay for that. The bear, of course, the bear and the wolf were a tiny bit concerned about pissing off the king of the sky. So they both fled, going to their burrows, respectively. And then, when the Willow Wren king and queen came back to the nest, the children would not eat. No, we will not eat even one fly's leg until that bear apologizes and admits we are honorable children. And at that, the, the Rillo Wren agreed. And so he went to war with the animals. And the bear agreed to this war. And the bear called forth all the four-footed animals, the deer, the horses, the oxen, the foxes. And the willow wren too called forth all creatures that flew, the birds and the bees and the hornets and the flies, anything that flew in the sky. And he sent forth the gnat, who was the most cunning of them to go and spy on what the animals were doing. And when he arrived, the bear decreed, Fox, you are the most cunning of us all. You shall be our general and lead us into battle. The fox agreed, and he said, If I lift my tail up high, that means, means that the battle is good and that we should charge forth and fight. But if my tail is down and between my legs, it means the battle is lost and we must give up. The gnat went back to the willow wren and reported everything to the army. And as the fox went out into the battlefield and the animals readied their charge, the willow wren and all the flying creatures flew across the sky with such a humming and a whirring that there was just a tiny bit of fear in all the animals. And the fox was ready. He had his tail up high. But the willow wren sent the hornet and had him nest in the fox's behind. And it stung him once and the fox was still strong. He kept it up. 
But then he was stung twice by the hornet and the tail started to wane. And then on the third time he could keep it no longer and he stuck it right up in there, right up between his legs. And the animals thought the battle was lost and they all fled. The willow wren and his army had been victorious. The willow wren, wren then went to their children, but the king and queen were told they still would not eat until the bear had apologized. So the king of the birds went to the bear and demanded the apology, and the bear, as the loser of the war, obliged and admitted that these children of the willow wren were honorable indeed.